Hello, my name is Chris Tangway. I would like to talk to you today about the risk and accumulation point for a radioactive norm following in an ethylene plant. So first, let's just define what norm is. Norm is naturally occurring radioactive material. Radioactive uranium and thorium are found in the Earth's rock formations. During oil and gas production and extraction, it is not the long-lived uranium and thorium isotopes that are mobilized. However, different isotopes of radium-226, radium-228, and lead-210, which are mobilized and become transient. Uranium and thorium decay to form new isotopes, as shown here. The decay has forms of alpha decay, beta decay, or gamma emissions. The isotope half-lives may be only a few seconds, a few minutes, to thousands upon thousands of years. In the decay series shown here, we're most concerned with radium-226, radium-228, radon, and lead-210. Radon-222 is the intermediate decay product of radium-226, and it preferentially follows the natural gas lines. It decays through several rapid steps to lead-210, which can then, therefore build up as thin film in gas extraction equipment. Radon typically follows the gas stream. And in, in the absence of natural gas, though, radon will dissolve in the hydrocarbon and aqueous phase. Radioactive isotopes and salts have been in equilibrium in subterranean sedimentary rock for millennia. But during oil and gas extraction, these isotopes and salts are brought to the surface and appear mainly in the water that is co-produced with the oil and gas. These radioactive progeny, once in equilibrium, reach the surface, and with pressure and temperature changes, they can reach saturation points and precipitate and crystallize out of solution, along with sulfate and carbonate deposits as mineral scale or sludge in pipe and other related equipment. The salinity of the water co-produced from the well also has a determinant factor. The higher the salinity, the more norm is likely to be mobilized. Since the salinity often increases with the age of the well, older wells tend to exhibit higher norm levels than younger wells. Sedimentary rock is divided into two subcategories. There's ditrital and chemical. There's different levels of radioactivity per each rock type. Over the past few decades, we've been in a shale gas boom. You can see here that shale has an 80% increase in radioactivity in parts per million of thorium compared to the other averages of sandstone and clay. Now, radium is a part of the group two on the periodic table of elements. Group two includes beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and of course, radium. Now, as we move down this column on the table, the density increases. And as shown on the x, on the y-axis, the at atomic radiuses converge to the point where barium and radium nearly have the same atomic radius. During production, mineral scale is formed, and the main types found in oil and gas facilities are sulfate scale, such as beryllium, barium sulfate, and strontium sulfate, and calcium carbonate. As shown previous slide, the radium is similar to the radius of beryllium, strontium, and calcium, and hence co-precipitates to form radium sulfate, radium carbonate, and in some cases, radium silicate. The mineral scale shown here in the image would be analogous to the mineral scale you may see at your home from a hard water source. Now downstream in a typical fractionation train for natural gas as shown here, because the radon preferentially travels with the natural gas, it has a, and has a similar boiling point to propane, it has a disproportionately high percentage of radon can concentrate in the propane streams and to a lesser extent, the ethane stream. Also downstream, a majority of the radon decay products attach themselves to ambient aerosols of particles, thus forming a film, thin film or layer on the inner surfaces. Therefore, but they begin to accumulate at the points of impaction, such as bends or elbows in the pipe or fist plates. An example where the norm has collected is shown here on a natural gas filter. A natural gas filter here has collected enough norm to measure over 2,000 millirems per hour. Another instance is shown here is a natural gas plant in Texas, where the norm has built up inside the depropanizer and deep 
butanizer vessels. The extent of the reactivity was measured at 6,000 counts per minute. And the radiation could actually be detected on the outside of the vessel itself, and thus the radiation was traveling through the carbon steel of the vessel. Here's a picture of a gas flow meter in Alberta. The norm was embedded in the metal itself even after it was mechanically cleaned. The norm was measured at 400 and 200 counts per minute, two different spaces. This is above the legal limits, and thus the flow meter couldn't even be put back into service. The exposure to norm provides health concerns. In the form of a radiation or a contamination, the decay ionization energies of alpha or beta has different levels of transmission and penetration abilities. It limits their ability to transmit through even paper or plastic, while gamma emissions can travel through tissue or even steel. To remove mineral scale is very labor intensive and has an elevated exposure to workers present. Occupational awareness and knowing how to decontaminate and handle norms safely to not spread or even contaminate other workers is a, a subject of concern. The proper PPE necessary, as shown here with a respirator, a Tyvek suit, gloves, boots, taped off cuffs, you can see that in this PPE, you wouldn't last long in the summer months, especially here in Texas. All workers would have to have proper knowledge and training in norm too. There are two ways in which a person can be exposed to norm, namely irradiation, which is the external exposure where the source remains outside the body, and contamination, which is internal exposure through absorption, inhalation, or ingestion. Now the health effects are associated with the, the exposure to the ionization energy, and it depends on the total amount of energy absorbed, the time period for which you expose, and the dose rate, also the organ to which it was exposed. Exposure to norm will not result in an acute or severe effects to those similar associated with exposure to a high radiation level like a man-made source but the chronic exposure to norm above exposure limits, which are typically delayed, show as delayed effects, such as the development of certain forms of cancer. A variety of cancers, including leukemia and cancers of the lung, stomach, esophagus, bone, thyroid, and even effects of brain and nervous system. The challenge of decontamination is it's radioactive, and now we're gonna disturb it. So the chance to actually pick it up or put it into the air is increased. We're gonna accumulate this radioactive material into higher concentrations, and all the material during decontamination used, the pipe, the tools, the container, are all considered contaminated, and we'll have to go through a decon process. Now the mechanical or, or manual cleaning is labor intensive, takes time, and increases worker exposure. Thus, you'll need higher PPE. Now remember the mineral scale associated with this, such as barium sulfate, is so hard that it's actually measured on the mole hardness like a diamond. So handling this safely will be a severe concern and it will be difficult to break apart and even knowing how to dispose of the material may be a problem. FQE Chemicals would like to introduce and show NormClear as a possible solution. It's a water-soluble product with selective extractants designed to remove norm Specifically, this patented technology can remove the contaminations from vessels, tanks, process pipe in situ. You don't have to take apart the equipment. You can do it through a circulation or even a soak. The norm clear product liquid will can reach places where hydroblasting cannot, or even clean delicate equipment that wouldn't even survive the hydroblasting. Don't have to take apart the equipment as indicated such as a, an intricate heat exchanger that would be very problematic. We're reducing the level of the human exposure and thus definitely deemed safer. NormClear has been used across the planet in various forms. We've used NormClear to clean gas refinery plants, depulpenizer towers, oil fill valves, different flow meters and natural gas, and natural gas processing filters. You can follow our site to find norm removal case studies through the link here shown here.
You can also contact me directly if you have any further questions. We have offices here in the United States, Canada, Asia Pacific. I'd be interested in hearing more feedback from you and answering any questions. Thank you for your time.